Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. My name is Richard Ross, your instructor, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to add records automatically to your databases by clicking a button using the go to record command. Today, we actually have a double question. Part one comes from Desmond in Arlington, Virginia, a silver member. Desmond says, I'm managing a doctor's office. I need to set follow-up dates for patients who have come in for testing. The first follow-up date has to be five days after their appointment, the next 10 days, then 30 days, then 90 days. Is there any way that Access can add these dates to my follow-ups automatically? Yes, there certainly is. I'll show you how to do that in just a few seconds. The follow-up, which is a very similar question, comes from Ger Arn in Norway, a gold member. And he says, I have a single table that I need to automatically fill in values when I click a button. I have boxes with alphanumeric labels such as FE, 30001, 02, and so on. And each of those boxes have positions such as A1, A2, A3, and so on. Is this possible? Yes, this certainly is possible. This will involve a little more work. We'll have to do some looping and changing values from alphanumeric values, such as that FE30001, which is a little more difficult than just adding numbers. We'll do this in the extended cut for members. But right now, let's see how we can add these automatic follow-ups to our contacts table. Okay, I'm going to start with my blank customer contact database. You could download a free copy of this from my website. I'll put a link down below in the description. And in this database, this is my starting database. I've got a basic customer form where you can see all the customer's information. I've got a customer list where you can click on a customer and open up their particular record. And inside of that, I've got the contact history. And we can use this contact history for future follow-ups as well. So when we built this template, we added this little checkbox down here so that we can specify follow-ups. Now, we really didn't do much with it as far as making a list of follow-ups. So, for example, let's say this came in for an interview here. I checked that I want to follow up. Well, where's my list of follow-ups? Well, we can create a query, create query design to make our list of follow-ups. Show me all of the contacts, and I also want to add in the customer information. They're linked together here. Okay, bring in the contact ID, the contact date, the description, and you can bring in the notes if you want to, and where follow-up is equal to true. Okay, and I'll save this as my follow-up queue. This is my follow-up query. So now, to get a list of follow-ups, all I have to do is run the follow-up query, and there it is. There's my follow-up date, the description, and I could add in the customer information too if I want to. Who's the customer? Well, first name, last name, and maybe you want phone number. Okay, save that, close it, run the query, there's all your follow-ups. And you can sort them by date. You can do whatever you want to. You could take this query and pull it into a form or print it out in a report. I've got lots of different videos on how to do all that stuff. Okay, but this, this video is to show you how to add these follow-ups automatically. So if I want to add a date that's in the future, today's 12-13, right? I can just simply click on this little button here. I can make a date for five days in the future. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then, you know, first follow-up. All right, now make sure you check the box down here for a follow-up. And now when I close this and come and run the follow-up queue, there's my first follow-up, and it's on 12-18. And you could put a criteria in here so you can only see follow-ups that are today or in the past, so you don't see all your future follow-ups. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. Now, how do I get the system to automatically put those follow-ups in for me? Let's say, let's get rid of that. I just realized one of the things that I did in the template was I said in my continuous forms, I set it so that allowed deletions is off. So we're going to have to change that real quick if you're using the template. I'm going to change this in the template, actually. So this is the older version of the template. But in my, um, in my contact form here, design, I have to go into the properties and say allow deletions is true. Yes. All right. Okay. So let's change that now. Let's get rid of that first follow-up. Delete. I set it that way because usually when you have like a customer list, you don't want someone to be able to delete customers out here. All right, if I hit delete, nothing happens. In order to delete that customer, you want them to have to actually open up the customer and delete it here. Okay, so let's make a little button down here that creates those follow-ups for us automatically. Okay, so I want to put a little button right there that simply goes up here, adds a record, five days in the future, 
goes to a new record, adds another one 10 days in the future, and so on. Let's start with just one. We'll put a button right here. Now, this is easier to do while this is not a subform. So let's just go back out and open up the contact form directly in Design View. This is much easier to do right like this. Grab a button, drop it here. Now the wizard starts up, cancel the wizard. This is a little more advanced. All right, so add future follow-ups. All right, this will add our future follow-ups for us. And I'll slide this button over just a little bit like that. Let's give the button a good name. Instead of Command-7, let's call this Add Follow-Ups BTN button. Okay. Right-click on it. Go to Build Event. You may be asked what builder you want. Pick the code Builder. Now, right inside of here is what happens when we click on that button. Now, what do I want to do? Well, I want to go up here to the Contact Date field and go to a new record. So the first thing I'm going to do is say do command dot go to control. There it is. And then what is the control name? The control name is contact date up there on top in the other form. So I want to move from the button up to contact date. Now I want to go to a blank new record. So do command dot go to record. What kind of object are we dealing with? AC data form comma. What's the object name? The name of the form is always going to be me.name. Just put that in there. So no matter what form you're on, it'll always go to that form's controls. You can go to control and go to a record on a different form if you want to. That's why that option is available. But usually you want me.name. Okay? Then which record do you want? We want AC new rec. You can go to a first, last, right? Next record, previous. We want to go to a new record. So now I'm on the contact date field sitting on a new record. So the first follow-up is going to be five days in the future. So contact date equals today's date plus five days. Okay, that's five days in the future. If you want to specify a different date for the start date, you can. You can simply ask them. We can use like an input box if you want to. So right up top here, we could say dim start date as a date. And we'll need a string to put it in, so dim s as a string. And we'll say s equals input box, enter appointment date, the date of their appointment, comma, right, enter date. Okay. Now, if they hit cancel or they don't enter anything, I'm going to say if s equals blank, a blank string, an empty string, then exit sub. They didn't give me anything. But they typed in a date. So now I'm going to say start date equals c date s. That says convert that string into a date value. And if you want to check for crazy dates here, you can. You could say if the start date's less than a year ago or if it's more than a year in the future, whatever you want to do. All kinds of stuff you can do in here. I'm just going to leave it at that. We're going to assume that our people typing the data in are putting in valid dates. If you want to add date checking, do it here. And if you're not sure how, send me an email and I'll point you to the right videos that cover it. All right. But now we'll just change this from being today's date to the start date plus 5, right? Remember, in access, one day is a value of 1. So plus 5 is 5 days in the future. In fact, we can put a default date in here in the input box, comma. For the default value, put the date in there, today's date. All right? Or if you normally enter in yesterday's appointments in the system, go date minus 1. Or if it's tomorrow, date plus 1. Okay? Uh, days are easy. Weeks are easy. It's always 7s. Months are a little tougher because months can be 28, 30, 29, 31. So that you have to use the date add function for. I've got videos on date add. All right. But usually like this particular person, uh, Desmond wants 30 days and 90 days. So that's easy. Just plus 30 plus 90. But if you wanted, you know, two months to the, you know, the actual calendar date, then you have to use date add and add months. I should preface, by the way, if you've never done any visual basic programming, um, I, had, I cover it in my developer one class. I also have some uh, a free intro to VBA, which is available on my website and on YouTube if you've never done any programming before. Go watch that video. I'll put links down below. I usually mention that when I started, but I forgot to today. All right, so we're going to default to today's date for the enter appointment date. We're going to go to control contact date, go to a new record, put that in there. What do we want to put in the description? We'll put in there description equals, quote, follow up, and we'll put appointment follow up, APPT follow up, number, number one, just like that. And let's check this to make sure it works. Let's come over here and open up the contact form and hit add future follow-ups. 
and put in OK. And there it goes. And it works great. The problem is when it's a standalone form, it works just fine, but it doesn't put the customer ID in there because we're not linked to the customer form because it's a subform. So if I do this from inside the subform, add future follow ups, we get a problem here. Look at that. It says contact F isn't open because we're trying to go directly to contact F. So this is one of those rare situations where I'm actually going to tell you not to put these values in here. Just go comma, comma. What that says, it will use the default object that you're on and the default object name, which is the form that we're currently in. Otherwise, you got to refer to it as forms, customer F, subform name, dot form. It, it becomes complicated, but this will actually work here. I wanted to show you the right way first, and this is the shortcut way. This says just go to a new record and whatever I happen to be sitting on. Okay. Now that I've shown you that, I can hit this button, hit OK, and it will actually will work. Okay, see that? But the proper way to do it is to put the actual values in there. Okay, now let's add in the other records. So we've got the next one here is going to be 10 days. So we're going to just basically copy this stuff, right? Control-C and then paste it down here, Control-V. We're going to go to another new record, all right? Contact date now equals start date plus 10, appointment follow-up 2, and then another one. What was it? Plus 30. Follow up 3. Oops, not 4, 3. And then the final one was 90 days. And that's follow up 4. And then when we're all done, we're going to go to a new record. So we're sitting on a blank new record when we're finished. All right, let's save that. Let's come back out here. Let's clear this old one. Delete. And ready to add the future follow-ups? Click the appointment date. Let's put an appointment date in here of 12-1. Uh, and then hit OK. Boom. There you go. 5 days, 10 days, 30 days, 90 days. There's your appointment follow-ups. And one thing we forgot to do is notice we didn't mark them as follow-ups. All right, so let's set that to. That's another field we forgot to put in there. And that field will be, let's go to the contact table. What's that called? That's called just follow-up. Okay, so in here, we need a follow-up equals true for each of these. So we'll copy this. Copy. Paste. Paste. And paste. Save it. Come back into here. Ready? Go. There we go. And they're all marked as follow-ups. And now they'll show up on our follow-up queue. See, there they are. So that is the quick and dirty way to automatically add future records with a little bit of VB code. Now in the extended cut, we're going to take this a little bit further and we're going to have to do some looping because Gare Iron wants to do the same thing basically, but he's using fields that have alphanumeric values for example, FE30001. So we're going to have to separate this out into a prefix and a suffix, then add to that suffix value. And then he wants separate sub records. They're going to be A1, A2, A3, and so on. So we'll see how to do that in the extended cut. All right, here's what it looks like. We've got a little bit of work to do for the members in the extended cut. We have to determine what the next box number is. If one doesn't exist, we have to create it. And it always is in that format, FE3 and then a number, 0001, then the next one is 0002, and so on. We'll have to use the dmax function to figure that out. We'll have to split the prefix and the suffix in order to add that value together. Then we'll have to create nested for loops for the position, right? 1 through 8 and then A through H. And in order to do that, we're going to learn about ASCII codes and the CHR function. Lots to do in this members-only extended cut. How do you become a member? Click on the Join button below the video. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and other perks. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. But don't worry, these tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to share it wherever you think it might help people who are interested in access. 
Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to be notified every time I post a new video. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link below to join my mailing list. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over three hours long, and you can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1, and that is free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page and you can send me your question there. If you have a specific problem you need help with or you'd like to discuss having a database built for your needs, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting. Be sure to follow my blog and find me on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.